Okay, this is my first attempt at trying to do a YouTube video of an educational video. What I'm going to hope to do is clarify how to cut a 45 on a piece of pipe or any cylinder as far as that goes. As you can see, something like this. This is a 45 or a 22 and a half. Or as far as that goes, we'll be able to cut any angle on a piece of pipe when I get through explaining this if I do a job very well. Now, the items that you're going to need to be able to do this correctly, you'll need a tape measure. Here's a tape measure. You're going to need a protractor. Here's your protractor. I'd have a straight edge ruler. Here's a compass that you'll need for drawing a perfect circle. You're going to need a pencil. And if you're like me, you'll probably need a pretty good eraser. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is I want to show you the proper directions on how to do this. Uh, the reason that I'm even attempting this is because I looked at the other videos on YouTube that were supposed to show how to do this and I wasn't impressed with what I found. So, I'm going to attempt to do this and show you the proper way to cut any angle on any piece of pipe or cylinder. I was actually trying to cut a piece of six and three eighths inch like piece of stove pipe to build a rocket stove. But the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a perfect circle right down here. I will do that and then we're going to divide that circle into 16 equal parts like a wagon wheel. It will look like a wagon wheel. Something similar to this when we get done. Okay? This perfect circle needs to be the exact same outside diameter as the cylinder that you're cutting. So in my case it was six and three eighths for my pipe so I'm going to do a six and three eighths perfect circle down here in the bottom of this piece of paper. The other thing that you will need obviously is a big enough piece of paper to make your pattern on and it needs to be at least the circumference of whatever it is that you're going to cut. The circumference you find by taking the diameter times pi. And so in my case it's 20 inches. So this piece of paper is big enough to do 20 inches. Plus I'm going to have this uh, diameter of the circle over here. So it needs to be about 26 inches. This one here is like 36 inches. So I'm good. But you will need a big piece of paper. Now I'll draw the circle and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I told you that my pipe was six and three eighths, so I used my little handy um, compass here, and you've got to do obviously the radius, which would be three and three sixteenths, and then you make a perfect circle. Here you can see my perfect circle that I have made, and it is six and three eighths, the exact outside diameter of my pipe. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide this by using our protractor into perfect segments, 16 different segments, and it's going to look like a wagon wheel when we're done. And we're going to number it like this as well. I'll do this one step at a time. You can kind of see where I'm going with this, but I just want to give you all the details so you know how to do it properly. Okay, you can see my wagon wheel here, and I used the plumb line dropping to the center of my circle as my mark to start my 90 degree, 22 and a half degree marks all the way around the circle from. And I ran it on up because that's where we're going to actually make our pipe cut mark at. So you can see here, let me see if I can zoom in. Here is my perfect circle that is divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 2, 16 equal segments and it's perfectly marked out using your little handy protractor. Here's the vertical line that we're going to go up here and actually make our pipe cut angle on and it doesn't matter which angle you put on this thing. You could do a perfect 90 degree angle or a 1 degree or 2 all the way up. I'm going to do a perfect 45 just as this picture shows because that's what I was trying to make for my particular piece of pipe that you might need a 62 degree angle to make something work. Whatever it is, this particular way of cutting pipe or a cylinder will work. So, 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to extend each of our wagon wheel lines, our wagon wheel spokes, if you will, up vertically, parallel. We're going to be parallel to our plumb line that we drop down through here. So you'll see when I get all these drawn up through here, they'll all be parallel to this. Now, in this picture, or in this image, you can see that I went ahead and extended my wagon wheel lines parallel to one another up the piece of paper. What you got to do to do this is you have to take a measurement. You always start at your center of your wagon wheel, then you're going to have to take a measurement from the vertical line over to the edge of the wagon wheel, mark it up here with your ruler, and then straight edge it up that way that all your lines are perfectly parallel to one another. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw whatever angle it is that we're cutting up here down in this fashion. If you was cutting a one degree angle, it would be like this, 10 degree, 20, 30, 45, whatever it may be. The line's going to be on a perfect 45, and I'll erase the lines up here once I get that done. So I've drawn my 45 degree angle and I have extended all of my vertical lines from my wagon wheel spokes up to the 45 degree angle and then I've erased all the little ends so we have the perfect 45 degree cut on that. You can see here, I'm trying to get it where the camera can see it perfect. You can see the wagon wheel, lines extended up to the 45 degree angle here. Now, this seems like it's taken a long time, but this whole process probably hadn't taken me but probably about five, six minutes so far. Now, the next step that we're going to do is we are going to go just above the wheel and to the right, and we're going to draw a horizontal line across here the exact same length that the circumference of our pipe is. And to figure out the circumference of our pipe, what we do is we take 3.14, which is pi, this is actually 3.1415, and you, you get the idea, times the diameter of your pipe. And mine was 6, and what did I tell you earlier? 6 and 3 eighths. It was 6 and 3 eighths times 3.1415, and it actually comes out to be 20.02. So the next step you'll see is I'll have a 20 inch line drawn here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide that 20 inch line into 16 equal parts by halving it each time. That's the easiest way to do it. And so when I have the 20 inch line, it'll be divided into 16 equal parts. Okay, so what I've done is I've drawn my horizontal line that for my pipe circumference is 20 and 0.02, I think, 20 inches long. And then I have subdivided that into 16 equal parts by halving it. Each your pipe will probably be different. If you have a six inch circumference, it'll be three, one and a half, you know, that so on and so forth. Mine was 10, five, two and a half, one and a quarter inches. And then I numbered them according to what the directions show. You see the one, two, three, four, five right here on your wagon wheel and then up here, on our horizontal line, you've got the same thing. you got one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine, and then it goes back down again. So in our drawing, you can see the exact same thing is down here. The wagon wheel now is numbered. I think you can see my numbers on there. And now my horizontal line, which is 20 inches long, is also numbered. Bringing this to a head it won't take much longer now. Okay, so now we've drawn our horizontal line. It's the circumference of our pipe, which is this. What I should have mentioned a while ago is this horizontal line needs to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to all of your vertical lines coming out of your wagon wheel. Okay, now then what we're going to do, we're going to subdivide your horizontal line into 16 equal parts by halving it. We talked about that, and then we're going to extend those up at perfect 90 degree angles to this line. That way that all of your vertical lines on the whole piece of pattern, on the pattern, are all parallel to one another. So you can see how I've drawn these up. Now all we're going to do is we're going to simply 
intersect these lines at 90 degree angles with the corresponding number. So one on the wagon wheel goes to one here and one over here. And we're going to draw a 90 degree angle over that. Number two over that. Number three over that. And we're going to make points on this. And this is going to make a perfect sine wave with these points. And that sine wave is the pattern for the perfect 45 degree cut on that piece of pipe or any cylinder. Okay, so after drawing our horizontal line divided into 16 equal parts, 90 degree angles vertically going up so all of our lines are parallel, then what we're going to do is we're going to 90 degree angle over from our vertical wagon wheel lines that are at the point of our angle cut that we marked and we're going to connect them to the corresponding number all the way across and we're going to make points. So you can see the points here, two, three, four, five, all, all the way up to the center point. Then I just measured the length of these lines to mark the points for the corresponding side because I didn't have a yardstick to go all the way across. Here's a closer up view. Wagon wheel, vertical lines up to our 45 degree cut, 90 degree over to our sine wave points. And now all we're going to do is connect the dots on our sine wave and we're going to cut that out. I'll draw, I'll uh, connect the dots and then I'll show you how to cut it out with the scissors which is simple and then wrap it around your pipe and you're good to go. So you can see where I connected all of my dots here for my sine wave. And that is the perfect pattern for a 45 degree cut on a 6 and 3 8 inch pipe. What's funny about this is that you thought that using all this protractor and compass and all this stuff that you learned in ninth grade geometry would never be used again. But little did you know, if you want to make a practical cut and make it perfect, this is how you have to do it. I'll cut this out and show you what the pattern looks like. Okay, and here you can see is my perfect 45 degree cut sine wave angle guide for a 6 and 3 8 inch stove pipe or any 6 and 3 8 eight inch cylinder. And that's how you would do it for pretty much any size pipe and any angle that you wanted to cut. Now all we got to do now is we should be able to wrap this into a perfect circle. Let me move this stuff out of the way. <clears throat> if we wrap this into a perfect circle and we were to tape it here, that should equal six and three-eighths inches. And I don't have a tape measure, but it does equal that. And if we set it right here, looky there. She says perfectly flat at a perfectly cut 45 degree angle. And that's how it's done. <laughs>